Boy, oh boy, when it comes to only selecting 10 changes for Druids for a top 10 list, it's not going to be easy. I'll be covering all the specs in great detail in the future, so be sure to subscribe, and while you're down there, hit like on the video. It really does help out. But for today, we're going to pick a few of the big changes for all the Druid roles and specs to get you excited for Kata, or maybe not if you are not excited about Kata at all. But if you're a Druid fan... I do think you'll like some of these changes. Every spec of the Druid is improved massively from Wrath of the Lich King. Feral DPS probably feels the most similar because outside of a couple of additional talents, which change things up a little bit, it is just more of the same really, which I think most Ferals will actually be happy about because the couple of minor changes do make a big difference, but it still feels extremely familiar. Resto Druid feels great from both a tank healing and a raid healing perspective, has very little issues with mana, and again, if you like the healing style in Wrath of the Lich King and you're familiar with with a resto druid i don't think you're going to be disappointed in cataclysm feral tank without a doubt is one of the strongest tanks in kata and you'll see most guilds running a blood dk and a feral tank that's not to say that prop paladins and prop warriors are no good cataclysm though really is just the feral tank expansion and then finally boomy it gets a new improved eclipse system which might take some getting used to but once you work it out on what each eclipse state is strong for you're going to absolutely love it. Even though it's not druid specific, the addition of the wargam race as well is something that's pretty cool because you can now run around RP and as a human. RP and as a human. Anyway, moving on. Firstly, coming in at number one tree of life now tree of life might be something that you're already familiar with because you just assume that's what you sit in when you're healing as a resto druid well actually that changes you'll be spending the majority of your time in either your night elf or your wargam form or your tauren form or your troll form and once every three minutes you can turn yourself into a tree this was one change i didn't think i'd be a fan of because it removes that really distinctive visual that you are a resto druid so what does tree of life do well it actually enhances a bunch of abilities that you've already got so it improves life bloom wild growth regrowth entangling roots and wrath and you can see them lit up on the bar so life bloom firstly can only be on one target at a time whereas when you've got tree of life up you can put it on many targets at a time and the reason this is really important is because of the talent malfurion's gift which whenever you heal with your life bloom spell you have a four percent chance to cause omen of clarity which of course is a free healing spell that you'll be able to then cast so when tree of life is up and you've got life bloom spread on lots of different targets it's increasing that chance of clear cast and the thing that you're going to use those clear casting procs on would be regrowth because while you're in tree of life form it makes regrowth an instant cast what it does for wild growth is it means it can affect two additional targets so ordinarily it can only affect five whilst trees up you can actually get this on seven targets wrath has its cast time reduced by 50 percent and its damage increased by 30 percent so just that one you can actually use tree of life as a bit of a nuke phase so if it's a tight dps race where actually for the last 10% of the boss, it's just all guns blazing. Everyone do as much damage as possible and the healing's all right. You can pop tree of life form and just start spamming wrath. An example of where it could be useful is something like Chimeron, where actually at the end of the fight, everybody receives zero healing so if you've got tree of life available you can pop in tree of life and just do some damage and the final one is entangling roots where tree of life just causes it to become instant cast which obviously is going to be extremely useful in pvp if you prefer the more old school look of the tree form then you can actually glyph tree of life so with glyph of treant which will make you look like the usual tree that you're used to but it's an amazing cooldown it also increases healing done by 15 percent as well as increasing your armor by 120 percent and also protects the caster from polymorph effects but just all round a really powerful healing cooldown that you should be using as much as possible coming in at number two is stampeding raw this will be a quick one because quite honestly there's not that much to talk about but on a two minute cooldown you can raw increasing the movement speed of all friendly players within 10 yards by 60 percent for eight seconds you would obviously macro this so you don't need two abilities on your bar you would have it so it will use cat form stampeding raw if you're in cat or bear stampede in raw if you're in bear now this is just a real unique raid cooldown because what you're used to as a raid cooldown is either really really big heals from things like tranquility or divine him or mana returns from something like him of hope or just damage reduction from things like divine guardian to have a movement speed increase for your entire raid is something that's going to come in incredibly useful throughout all tiers of raiding because if you just think about twins in togc when everybody needs to run across the room to change back to their original color if they're had to change for an ability at the moment you'll see everyone rocket boots across being able to use a druid stampede in raw for moments like that where the entire raid needs to move 
or you're all stacked and you need to move from one point to another to then maybe move back again. Having a couple of druids take it in turns, so you stampede him raw to one spot and then another druid stampede him raws back to the other spot. It's really powerful. Personally, it's actually one I'm looking forward to seeing how people use it on different fights. Coming in at number three would be the balance rotation or the change to the spec as a whole with now having an actual eclipse bar where you move from solar to lunar and lunar to solar. Eclipse in general is nothing new. It's in talent form in Wrath of the Lich King and it still does take on a very similar playstyle where you're going from Wrath spam into Starfire spam in and then Starfire to Wrath. But you're also getting the empowerment from the actual eclipse state that you're currently in. The way the bar works is it's a bit like a pendulum so as you're casting wrath you'll be moving towards the lunar eclipse which is going to then empower your starfire when you're casting starfire you'll be moving towards the solar eclipse it only moves in one direction at a time until it reaches the end so you can see on this bar here that the arrow is pointing towards the lunar eclipse there is no way to now turn that back onto solar until you reach lunar so you always have to reach one end first depending where the arrow is facing and once you've reached there it will then start moving back you can dictate where it goes when you start neutral after a wipe for example it starts dead center so depending on what spell you cast first will depend on what direction it starts moving in so if you cast a wrath first you know you're going to start moving towards lunar now this will be important because depending on the fight and how the timings work on different fights you may want to be in a solar for example at a specific time to make use of mushrooms which we're going to talk about mushrooms funny enough they make the top 10. when you reach solar as well there's a talent that actually turns moonfire into sunfire and you also have one new ability which is star surge where you get procs where you get instant cast it actually does spell storm damage and it gives a large amount of solar or lunar energy depending on which way you're actually going your mastery just increases the bonus damage of your eclipse by 16 percent base and then each point of mastery increases it by two percent but the whole aim as a boomy is just to keep moving that bar from one end to the other using your instant cast star surges and maximizing those dot up times it gets a lot more complicated when you're going to be aoe in because again there will be different strengths to each side of the eclipse for example in solar you're going to want to maximize mushroom damage whereas in lunar you're going to want to maximize starfall damage but that will definitely be for another video coming in at number four is actually a bit of a two-parter because it's life bloom and empowered touch which is a talent in cataclysm life bloom is a super super efficient hill as you can see on a level 85 it's only 1.3k mana compared to let's say 3.7k of rejuve or 6.5k of regrowth life bloom needs to be kept up a hundred percent of the time on a tank as you would expect it can only be on one target at a time unless you've got tree of life active but with a talent empowered touch you can actually keep it refreshed by using nourish regrowth or healing touch so being able to just keep a hundred percent uptime on life bloom which does a decent amount of healing every single second and being able to tank heal efficiently without needing to refresh it because it does it itself is absolutely amazing and you want 100% uptime as you can see because clear casting procs left right center you've got to remember thanks to the talent malfurion's gift you have a four percent chance to cause omen of clarity to proc now this is every single tick and it's ticking a lot and it's ticking a lot more if you use it with tree of life there's not really a lot more to say about that it's just life bloom and it's being refreshed by other hills but if you're a resto druid you know like keeping life bloom on a target normally at the moment in wrath you'll be using your clear casting procs on it for example because it's quite an expensive hill being able to use it quite sparingly and not worry about it. if it falls off of one target it's not a big deal if you want to just chuck it on another target that's taking damage if the tank's taking no damage anyway just to be able to get that bloom hill at the end of it to top people off as well so it can be used a lot more situationally than just simply keeping it on the tank but the fact that you can put it on a tank and for the entire fight never need to refresh it does feel pretty good coming in at number five and a bit of a strange one ravage for feral is an ability that just doesn't get used anywhere near enough until now in kata you'll get a talent called stampede which increases your melee haste by 30 percent after you use feral charge bear for eight seconds and your next ravage will temporarily not require stealth or have a positioning requirement for 10 seconds after you use feral charge cat and it costs 100 percent less energy so every time you do a feral charge as cat you instantly get a free, no position in requirement stampede. And it's just a free combo point or two combo points if it crits. So where normally it feels extremely punishing to have to move out of melee range for any mechanics, at least now if you've got feral charge ready, you can instantly get back in and get a nice big, hopefully crit, get a couple of combo points and not feel bad for having to move out. The other good thing about this is you can actually use it rotationally. Because energy regen in the first tier of content when you're in, let's say, pre-raid bis is going to be pretty poor. So when you're really low on energy just being able to run out about eight yards quickly charge back in and being able to get 
a combo point or two combo points very very quickly and it's gave time for your energy to regen i see charge weaving as a thing charge weaving but that is it for number five just a real nice easy way to get some extra damage out coming in at number six is one that does incredible damage and you don't even feel like you're doing it and it is really for boomy for when you're sat in solar eclipse but wild mushrooms now you can place three of these mushrooms down on the ground at a time they can be placed in completely different positions or they can all be on top of each other now all on top of each other obviously makes sense if you're trying to do damage there is actually a talent which is called fungal growth which is when your treants die or wild mushrooms are triggered you spawn a fungal growth at its wake covering the area within eight yards slowing all enemies by 25% or 50% with two talents. Now, because of the way you can place these all in a line, let's say, and then blow them up, it would cause three nice big circles of slows that all the enemies would need to run through. So they can be used as utility as well as actual damage. But the damage that they put out as a boomy is absolutely phenomenal. Once you get yourself in solar and you're popping these mushrooms down on four or five mobs, obviously, the more the better, your damage absolutely skyrockets. And the strange thing is, it doesn't really even feel like you're doing a great deal because three globals in a row is placing them and one global is detonating them. But getting dots up in the downtime because detonate does have a 10 second cooldown, it's actually just really, really cool. My boomy in this footage is actually incredibly low geared compared to everybody else anyway and on aoe it absolutely slaps and it is because of these mushrooms 70 percent of my damage would have been coming just from detonating wild mushrooms another interesting thing is how you can use these in pvp because after six seconds the mushrooms become invisible so you could use these for example in warsong gulch at your base you could use these in a raffi basin again protecting a base someone comes up and tries to capture it not being able to see your mushrooms there boom you blow them up and you pop out of stealth there's just a lot of uses for mushrooms again outside of just doing big aoe damage they're really useful in pvp they'll be really useful for kiting i think overall mushrooms are just going to be a pretty enjoyable mechanic for any boomy enthusiast i know i keep fixating on boomy but it is just because they do so so much damage as boomy compared to everybody else coming in at number seven is feral now has an execute phase what no they actually do blood in the water is a talent that you're going to take where when you ferocious bite a target at or below 25 percent you have a hundred percent chance with two talent points in this to instantly refresh the duration of your rip on that target this also with a tier set gets massively improved later on in cataclysm where you can use it as high as 60 percent so for any feral lovers out there imagine getting a nice big tiger's fury buffed rip on a target from 60% onwards, you can ferocious buy every time you've got five combo points, obviously, whilst also keeping Savage Roar up. This feels absolutely amazing. And with how long some of the fights are on heroic bosses, that 25% is going to take a good couple of minutes in some cases. So you've got a couple of minutes of the fight where you can just be pumping ferocious buy after ferocious buy into the boss without having to worry about rip falling off because you're constantly refreshing it. This, and then with the tier set bonus as well, doing it from 60%, Feral feels absolutely amazing. The single target and the AoE are both just incredible as Feral, to the point where I'm probably going to go Feral main in Catter again. Coming in at number eight is the change to things like Abolish Disease, Abolish Poison. Obviously, Abolish Poison is going to be extremely relevant here. The reason I want to include this change is because it's changed now to just remove corruption, which nullifies corrupting effects on the friendly target, removing one curse and one poison. So both of them was put together. The reason it shows one magic effect here as well is because as a Resto Druid, you can empower your remove corruption to also remove a magic effect. So there's no longer Abolish and there's no longer Remove Curse. Both of those have been put into one button and also for a resto druid you'll be able to get rid of magic so with one button you can cleanse everything i got nothing else to say about that i just thought it was worth a mention because that's quite a big one if you're a healer and then coming in at number nine is just feral tanks in general they literally feel like you've activated god mode if you've got half decent gear and you're just doing five man heroics you don't even need to spec as a tank because bear is just that strong not only are you still a big chunky boy because you've got so much armor and so much health you also do a ridiculous amount of healing. I mean, just taking this boss fight as an example, I'm doing nearly as much self-healing as the healer is doing healing to the entire party. And that's because of Savage Defense, where each time you deal a critical strike that's a non-periodic critical strike, you've got a 50% chance to gain Savage Defense, absorbing physical damage 
equal to 35% of your attack power. Now you get so much attack power thanks to the new mechanic for all tanks called Vengeance, where each time you take damage while in bear form, you gain 5% of the damage taken as attack power, up to a maximum of 10% of your max health. So the bigger your health pool, the more attack power you can gain from Vengeance. Just means Savage Defense heals for so much. You can see the average absorbed from Savage Defense was 16.9k, which is nearly as much as a nourish critical strike from the healer in the group. AoE threat is absolutely no problem either anymore because swipe hits like an absolute truck and you get the addition of thrash, which is on a six second cooldown, but it puts a bleed on everybody it hits. Swipe does have a three second cooldown, but again, it does actually do significant damage now. And you still have Glyph of Maul, where your Maul ability hits one additional target, but for 50% damage. So it means you're not just a really strong tank, you're doing as much damage as the DPS most of the time, and as much healing as some lower performing healers. It just feels so good to tank on and threat is literally not even an issue. You also have the addition of pulverize which will make sense now you know about savage defense and that that's based off your crits because what pulverize does is it does a decent amount of damage being 60% weapon damage plus an additional let's say 1.6k for each lacerate application and lacerate stacks three times but you're also going to get 9% crit for 18 seconds when you pulverize on a target with three lacerates. It will consume the lacerate and you'll need to reapply them again but the more you're critting the more uptime you're going to have on savage defense meaning the more self-healing or absorbs not self-healing but all of the changes that come to these talents even with natural reaction giving you 18 percent less damage just for two points and increasing your dodge and you gain rage when you dodge getting that 30 percent haste when you feral charge in just increasing your threat even more having the change to survival instincts where it's just now a flat 50 percent damage reduction it all adds up to just a really good time to be a feral tank and this brings us finally to number 10 there is going to be a bonus one coming in at number 11 purely because it's just one ability that i've not actually mentioned yet and i at least want you to know all the new abilities but tiger's fury has been changed so tiger's fury is on a 30 second cooldown you can reduce it to 27 seconds with a glyph it still instantly restores 60 energy if you've got the king of the jungle talent but now it's just a flat 15 percent damage increase for physical abilities and you're like well why is that important it's just a minor change Change. It's important because it's a way you snapshot for 15% extra damage on Rake and Rip. So you're aiming to have your Rake and Rip empowered by Tiger's Fury as much as physically possible, especially when you're at the 25% mark or 60% when you've got the tier bonus later on in the expansion, where you want to make 100% certain that your rip has been empowered by Tiger's Fury as well as any other cooldowns that you've got. Because this means for the rest of the fight, you're always going to be refreshing that extremely powerful rip. I don't expect many druids to get excited about this other than the diehard feral DPSs. That's the top 10. I did say I'll add one more. And that's Skull Bash. You're probably looking at this thinking, well, it's only relevant for feral. Well, actually, every spec of druid gets this. If you're a feral, you can get this down to a 10 second cooldown when you take the brutal impact talent where it actually reduces the cooldown of your skull bash by 50 seconds so yep a 10 second cooldown but every spec of druid has an interrupt in bear form and an interrupt in cat form these do share a cooldown so you can only use one or the other every minute but as a feral tank or as a feral dps having a 10 second cooldown interrupt is incredible because sometimes in wrath especially on fights that really really rely on interrupts it can be the difference between you getting invited or a rogue getting invited. Now you can do it all. And quite honestly, that would be my top 10. All right, you got a bonus one with the interrupt, but I didn't want to leave it out. But that is my top 10 changes for Druid across the board. As I said at the start, I will be covering all of these specs in far, far greater detail over the next few months. So be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss those. Check me out on kick.com slash scottyj. Links in the description. See you on the next one.